The GP40 was introduced in 1966 as an evolution of the GP35. Along with the GP38 and similar SD series units, it marked the introduction of EMD 645 series engine, which used the same engine block dimensions as the 567 series, but incorporated modified power assemblies with a larger cylinder bore. In the GP40, a 16-cylinder turbocharged version of the engine produced 3,000 horsepower. The GP40 also used an alternator rectifier electrical system addressing one of the biggest reliability concerns of the GP35, in which the DC generator required 16 stages of transition to handle a 2,500 horsepower output. The GP38 was a 16-cylinder, non-turbocharged, roots-blown model that produced 2,000 horsepower, initially using a DC generator and later in the GP38 AC, using the same AR-10 alternator as the GP40. Both the GP38 and GP40 were fairly strong sellers, together accounting for more than 2,000 locomotives built. In 1972, EMD introduced an updated Dash 2 series, replacing the GP38 and GP40 with the GP38-2 and the GP40-2. Many GP38s and GP38 ACs remained in service with their original owners or successors well into the 21st century. GP40s in their original form started to disappear from Class 1 railroads in the 1990s, but many were rebuilt or continued in service on smaller roads. A fairly large number of GP38s and GP40s have received upgraded Dash 2 modular or Dash 3 microprocessor electrical systems, and a number of GP40s have been converted to GP38 variations by the replacement of the turbocharger with a roots blower. The GP38-2 retained the same 2,000 horsepower 645 series engine of the original GP38, but received a host of mechanical and electrical upgrades geared at improving reliability and ease of maintenance. Production continued until the end of 1986, at which point no direct replacement model was introduced. The GP38-2 retained the same general appearance as the GP38 with four axles, two 48-inch radiator fans, and two exhaust stacks. The paper air filter housing created a raised box on the hood roof line ahead of the exhaust stacks. Early in GP38-2 production, the radiator intakes were shortened and the fans moved closer together. Thanks to their reliability and versatility, the vast majority of GP38-2s have remained in service for more than 45 years after entering production and dozens of GP35s, GP40s, and GP50s have been rebuilt to GP38-2 or GP38-3 specifications. 
The Dash 2 line saw some 40 improvements to the original GP38, such as a redesigned non-turbo 16-cylinder two-cycle model 645E prime mover and a new solid-state electrical cabinet, among other things. In all, more than 2,200 GP38-2s were built for 59 customers in the United States, Mexico, and Canada, and many are still serving the rail industry to this day. Even though EMD first introduced the GP38-2 in 1972, this diesel-electric story actually begins back in the mid-1960s. It was during this period that railroads were replacing their aging fleet of first-generation diesels in mainline service with fewer but larger and more powerful units. However, these 3,000 to 3,600 horsepower monsters were unsuitable for use on many secondary jobs for which the earlier F units in GP7 and 9s were well suited. This need for more versatile motive power led to EMD's introduction of the GP38 in January 1966. These 4 axle 2000 horsepower Jeeps were more in line with their older brethren and quickly became a common sight on branch lines and in yards on many post 1960s North American railroads. By the early 1970s, many first generation diesels were reaching the end of their service lives. The most common replacement locomotive became the GP38 2. EMD began production of the 16 cylinder non-turbocharged 2,000 horsepower locomotive in 1972. But unlike the GP38's prime mover, which drove a generator to supply power to the traction motors, the GP38-2's prime mover drove an alternator which produced AC electrical current that was rectified to DC to power the four traction motors. Another major change for the GP38-2 was the introduction of the Dash 2 modular electrical cabinet. For more than 40 years, the GP38-2 has worked mainline freights, locals, switching jobs, yard service, helpers, snow fighting trains, and even hump power. With the unveiling of the Dash 2 line six years later, EMD had made some 40 improvements to its modern Jeep. A few of the more major internal changes included a redesigned non-turbo 16-cylinder two-cycle model 640E prime mover and a new solid-state electrical cabinet which was not only modular in design to aid in quick repairs, but also fully sealed and pressurized in an effort to keep dirt and debris out of the system. With these new designs, the 2000 horsepower GP38-2 proved to be a very reliable locomotive. Weighing in at a nominal 269,500 pounds, these Dash 2 variants were outfitted with four General Motors model D77 traction motors, AR10 generator, D14 alternator and could be optionally equipped with dynamic brakes. With a truck gear ratio of 62 to 5, the Jeep could attain maximum speeds of 65 miles per hour and had a starting tractive effort of 61,000 pounds and a continuous tractive effort of 54,700 pounds at 11.1 miles per hour. Externally, the Dash 2 changes were much more subtle, but there are some noticeable differences between the GP38-2 and EMD's earlier produced GP38. These included the addition of a water level sight glass on one of the right side doors on the long hood, the access doors to the battery compartment located just ahead of and below the cab on each side are bolted on rather than outfitted with latches and hinges, and many GP38-2s were equipped with the optional Blomberg M trucks distinguishable by their dampening strut and single brake cylinder. Unfortunately, these characteristics are only a guide and are not absolute. The most reliable attribute, the sight glass, is reportedly absent on some Dash 2s. Burlington Northern specified hinged battery box doors on its units and hundreds of GP38-2s rode on conventional Blomberg trucks obtained from traded-in first-generation EMD locomotives. So, if you are concerned about the external accuracy of a particular Rhodes GP38-2 in scale model form, you'll definitely want to consult the prototype photos. Between January 1972 and July 1986, EMD built more than 2,200 GP38-2s for 59 customers in the United States, Mexico, and Canada. Some of the many original owners of this locomotive included Lehigh Valley, Canadian Pacific, 
Missouri Pacific, Chicago and Northwestern, Seaboard Coastline, Penn Central, Louisville and Nashville, Clinchfield, Southern Railway, Burlington Northern, Vermont Railway, Kansas City Southern, Canadian National, Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, and Nationalis de Mexico, who along with the Southern Railway, owned high short hood units. The blue and gray lightning stripe livery of the Delaware and Hudson was a rail fan favorite. Today, I don't know if any still exist, but if they do, they soon too will be covered in Canadian Pacific's bright red paint, or they'll disappear off the locomotive roster entirely. Number 7303 rests at the Taylor Yard just two days before the Norfolk Southern takeover of the yard and the line. The Southern Railway was one of two railroads that ordered high hood GP38-2s. The other was the Nationalist de Mexico, as I mentioned earlier. Norfolk Southern inherited all of the ex-Southern Jeeps and has been systematically rebuilding them with low, short hoods. Take note, in keeping with Southern tradition, its Jeeps were geared to run long hood forward. Two Canadian Pacific GP38-2s run light to rescue a disabled train 458 on May 28, 2015. Like most of EMD's offerings, the GP38 had a six-axle variant such as the Reading and Northern 2003 shown working Taylor Yard on November 30, 2015. 2003 is also notable as once having an elaborate 20th anniversary paint scheme back in 2003, hence the locomotive number. EMD's SD38 made a name for itself in heavy drag freights and busy hump yards from the hills of Minnesota to the sprawling yards of the Northeast. And though production numbers were small compared to their similar SD40, many of these locomotives would change hands several times over their long careers, some of which continue on to this day. The SD38-2 and the SD40-2 were very similar externally, with their relatively long frame and short hood resulting in the large porches at either end. The SD38-2 had two radiator fans and two exhaust stacks, while the SD40-2 had three radiator fans and a single turbocharger exhaust stack that was changed to a flat silencer housing on later units. The SD38 used a 2,000 horsepower, roots-blown engine that replaced the SD28. The SD38 initially used a DC generator, but later in the SD38 AC used the same AR10 alternator as the SD40. From 2004 to 2007, Norfolk Southern rebuilt 37 former Southern Railway GP50 units into GP38-3s. The 3,500 horsepower 16-cylinder turbocharged 645F engine was derated to a 2,000 horsepower roots-blown 645E, which resulted in the removal of the middle radiator fan, the installation of a paper air filter box, and the replacement of the exhaust silencer with two exhaust stacks. Aside from these modifications, the original long hood of the GP50 was retained largely as is. While mechanically similar to a standard GP38-2, the units retained the Super Series wheel slip control system of the GP50. The original high short hood was replaced with an 81 inch low short hood, the same length as the high hood but shorter than the 88 inch low hood used on the other GP50s as built. The original EMD handbrake was replaced with a Graham White 393 series handbrake and an all new cab and sub base installed. The cab was built to the general design and dimensions of the EMD standard cab with a flat panel under the headlight as on earlier EMD units and a welded rectangular side panel as on late dash 2 and later units. The sub base and battery box doors, the notch for the handbrake and a few other minor details differed from the EMD built versions. During the cab conversion, the units were changed from long hood forward to short hood forward operation. 